Um, next up, I will start working on those rusty fenders. So these fenders actually come of an old 1955 Kwammer Superpoise truck. These are actually the front fenders of that truck. And I'm going to widen them so that they end up fitting maybe out here somewhere. I've got this old rotten fender <laughs> clamped up in my trusty old leg vise. The plan is to widen it. So the first thing I did was just to clean up this edge, get rid of the paint and the rust, so I can weld on it. I've got some nasty rust here, so I think I'm just going to cut that out first. Then I cut off the flange that was sitting all along here, with which it bolted to the original body. Um, I did leave a little bit of a lip, just to give it some stiffness. And now I've added these pieces temporarily, and I'll show you why just now. So these strips are just going to help me to keep my piece of plate in place. Okay, I've just lightly clamped it in place so we can get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So this is what I mean. You can see the square lagging here. I want this top surface to be square to this surface. So it's looking pretty good. I'm doing this rat rod style, so I'm not going to try and butt it. So I'm going to overlap it with the tiniest amount, a hey, three millimeters, one eighth of an inch. If I go further, this is not square to that face, then it will pull the plate. So I'm just going to try and really let just have it sitting like that. I made a mark there with a sharpie. Just to give me a guide. I'm also not going to try and bend it before the time or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a single tack and then I'm going to work my way slowly along. Okay, I've made a mark every inch and a half because uh, I want my tacks to be nice and equal, equally spaced. <laughs> Some people say I'm OCD. But you know what? That's their problem. <laughs> I'm going to start with the first stack right there. First stack. Now I'm going to create another one right there. Getting there? What do you think? So down here I've uh, run out of... <laughs> this part is rotten, if you look carefully you see there's a gap here. So that was all rusted away. And I've just clean cut out the bad stuff. I've just put on a little bit of a plate, piece of temporary plate on here, just to hold it in place. I'll come up with something down there a little bit later. So I'm just going to continue working my way that way now. These long reach clamps, or whatever you call them, is really handy for a situation like this. So I've got some interesting patchwork, patchwork to do here. This piece is now more or less in place the way it should be. I'm left with this big gaping hole where the bad rust spot was and then this funny shaped piece which uh, was because the mudguard was actually fitting around the curve on the comber. I need to cover this up. So I'm going to start by just putting some paper on it 
to see what we're going to get. And I just use magnets to hold it on, it works very well. So what's nice about using paper is that it doesn't take up a compound shape, so it will show me what is going to be required. And I can immediately see right here where we turn down and also this way. Maybe you can see it on the camera. We're going to have, there's quite a bit of serious compound curvature going on right here. So to do this in one piece is going to be quite difficult. Uh, you would need an English wheel, planishing hammer, sandbag, and none of which I have. Uh, note to self, be nice to the wife and ask her to stitch you a sandbag together. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do I'm going to do it in two pieces and take it from there. Just a more close-up view of what's going on here so you can see. So there the paper folds around okay and here it folds okay. But then we run into that problem. So the only way to get the paper to actually lie flat would be to cut a, a sort of a dart or a wedge out of here. Or of course you need to shape something with a compound curvature. So I made myself a paper template of the first piece. It kind of goes right up to that sharp turn down. Um, remember we're doing this rat rod style, eh? <laughs> We're not gonna... Yeah, you'll see what I'm gonna do. You'll see my approach. This is not uh, serious panel shaping or chasing flawless paint finishes or anything of that. But we can still do a nice job or try our best anyway. So I'm not going to take my paper template and cut out a piece of plate with the same shape. And here it is. So what I did, you can see it's got some shape to it. And I didn't use any fancy tools to do that because I haven't got any fancy tools. So all I used was a hammer, a vise and some dollies in my hands. And I kind of tried to get it roughly to the shape that we've got going on here. It's not too bad, there's a fair bit of working still to do, but I think it's going to work. So I'm going to clamp it in place first. So it's going to go under my new piece that's widening the fender to continue that look. I've scribed the little line there to reference it on. So it's just going under by, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, six more. <coughs> Something like that. Just line up my marks a little bit better. And add another clamp on this side. There we go, it's pretty close. Um, I think I'm going to just tack it here, I can maneuver it a little bit still. But I'm just going to tack it on in a few spots now. And then we can start working it from there using the hammer and a dolly and welding as we go along. So I'm looking to see where it's sitting flush. And right there. And right there. So I'm just going to give it a light tack at those points first. Okay, so I can move this clamp now. So I see it's lifting up here, so I can clamp it right in that good spot. And pull it down, see if it will go down. And it does. Very close. But not perfect. So I'm going to just hammer and dolly it a little bit here to get those surfaces flush. Uh, 
but it's not looking too bad. And give it a light tack right there. And I can move my clamp again. So it's a slow process. That one there is also good. Right here it's standing open or high. So it needs a little bit of dolly and hammer there too. Dolly from below. And just some Light hammer work and there we go, that's looking a whole lot better. Maybe a little bit more. Not quite. I'm just going to move my clamp a little bit. There we go, that's nice. And I'm going to work my way along like that now until all the surfaces are nice and flush and mated and tacked up. So right there, you can see the old metal was so thin from rusting obviously that I blew a hole right through. Um, there's an easy way to fix this. If you back it with some copper or in my case I'm just going to use this aluminium, the welding doesn't stick to it and it helps to dissipate the heat. It's going to heat up very quickly, so that's why I'm wearing a leather glove. So I'm going to put this from below, underneath the hole, something like that. And let's see. There you go, it's not Lamborghini style. <laughs> Good enough for a rad rod. I'm going to be running a stitch across all of this anyway, so then you won't even see it. Remember, I'm still going to do my little stitches, my rat rock, <laughs> rat rock, rat rod trademark. Okay, that's what we have so far. So this piece, the widening piece, is overlapping my patch piece, and my patch piece is overlapping on the original mud guard. <laughs> it's rat rod style, huh? I'm now just going to cut a piece of plate the same width as this one and run it all the way down to the bottom. Something that side is not straight. Something like that. Right, so I've cut myself a strip of sheet metal, but I need to pre-shape it a little bit. Let me show you. So this should really be rolling into that surface, if I can put it like that. That might be flat. There's a straight, but this surface on this side is all curved. So in the ideal world, we would want something like that. Not so. so if I just put a flat piece of plate on here, it's not going to work well. So I need to pre-shape my piece of plate so it's got some curvature running this way. So like I said, I haven't got any fancy gear, like a slip roller would have been very nice for this. Or even an English wheel. But I don't have any of that. So I started by just marking three rough lines on it. And then I just bent it in the vise. Very lightly, very gently. And I found this piece of pipe. And now I'm just... Well, I have put it onto the piece of pipe and then with the hammer. I was just lightly shaping it. So it's not going to give perfect results. But um, you look carefully, you can see some curvature in there. It's good enough for me. Remember what we are building. So now we've got that which will look and work a little bit better so then that tube section if i can call it that must now also go this way which brings compound curvature into play so i just literally kind of bent it 
with my thumbs. So it's starting to look quite sorry now. <laughs> Can you see? But I'm going to work it a little bit with a hammer and dolly and it will get much better. And um, also when I weld it in place, we'll pull and clamp and pull and clamp and carry on. Let's see how it goes. So here's something for you to laugh about. This rusty old dolly here and this crappy hammer. That's what I'm using to shape my plate. And let's not forget the rusty old shifting spanner. Or adjustable wrench, as my friends in the States would say. Okay, there's my piece. Together with the high-tech tools I've used to shape it with. <laughs> um, it's pretty close, I think. Let's go see. Okay, it's held in place with one clamp. It's good from far, but far from good. Um, but we'll work it. There's only one spot where it's touching at the moment, right there. Um, I'm going to need to clamp and pull and carry on, but I'm just going to give it one light tack right there. Right, so we tight right there. There you go. That's the nice thing about rat rods. There's no rules, eh? <laughs> so this is what I have. Here's a butt joint, so I will weld that fully and grind it. And here we have made my tacks. I'll just put my little stitches all along. I'm not going to do that yet because of the heat and everything. I just want to go fit it. Down here is another freaking rust hole. But I'm not going to do anything about it now. I was first want to go and try it on the truck to determine exactly where it's going to be cut off. Um, I will cut off the excess of my plate just now. And there's an overview of the war zone. <laughs> okay, first try on the truck. Um, yeah, let, excuse the background noise. It's uh, dropping, raining lightly on my tin roof. So yeah, it's standing out way too far at the moment, I know, but I needed to make this oversized so I can sort out this taper, so I'm going to have to cut this back and it will move in. Yeah, I've got a bunch of decisions to make now. I have to decide the exact position of this thing fore and aft and also like this. Let's look at it from another angle. Yeah, so if you look at it from the side, there's a few things to consider and to think about. Um, I'm kind of thinking that this vertical area or so must be parallel to that, to the cab, so it should be vertical as an ease. But the whole position of the fender in this movement can be adjusted. The other thing to look at is the gap here and here. At the moment it's about the same. That could be changed. So yeah, I'd like some input. What's your opinion? What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments. What do you think? How should this fender be positioned? I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to have to consider it for a while. So I'd, I'd appreciate some opinions. 
let me know uh, maybe I should just mention of course it's gonna get cut off here somewhere at about the same level as the this here in the front it's very close maybe an inch or so needs to come off this is a sort of three-quarter view you can see that uh, it's way down too much here so it need to be cut off somewhere there and then obviously move in to close up this gap so I'm gonna cut it here I've run out of steam, <laughs> excuse me, so I'm going to call it a day. Um, tomorrow I'll get the fenders fixed to the truck. So uh, until then, thanks very much for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.